The liberation of Pippo Ganner is here, another frenetic roundabout field sprint stage in this year's Vuelta a España from Morella to Buriana. The identical stage to yesterday, I'm serious, like two warm-up climbs beforehand, one Category 2, but it's like 3 4% average, far from the finish, before they go through a million roundabouts to the coast, uh, where they finish in a sprint, and Eddie Dunbar unfortunately crashed in the neutral, he would abandon the race uh, today from that crash, and it was one man getting the breakaway, Fagundes for Burgos Biache, chased by Jason Osborne for the most part, on Alperson to Koenig, who want Caden Groves to double up. So the climbers, they had an off day, pretty easy, chill day for the GC guys, except for the last half an hour, of course. And here was that Category 2 climb. Zana abandoned, so Jayco's two best riders out of the race, not a good day for them at all. And poor old Fagundes, who's been up the road all day, begins to be chased by the current KOM wearer, Sepulveda on Lotto Destiny, wanting to snipe the points on top away from him after not being in the break all day. So pretty smart from Sepulveda, actually. Alperson had brought it close enough. The GC teams and Quickstep and Alperson just don't react because they don't care about Sepulveda. They'll catch him later on this beautiful, well tarmac climbed up and downhill. It's a really nice descent afterwards so Sepulveda takes those points and Quickstep actually have been beating Yumbo to the punch here they want to take the descent in first position it is quite a twisty technical descent I don't know if that's Catania I think it is and he yeah he they sprint and they get Remco basically second wheel with Seri I think actually taking the descent for the most part in front for them but yeah they just want to be first position there's always that sort of battle on this twisty descent but as well Tarmac they took it easy and uh, that was that really with not too much difficult terrain afterwards, Alberson go back to the front, and Sepulveda, oh, he kept riding, he didn't just go straight back to the peloton, but they caught him a few k's later, and we have no breakaway, but the GC teams keep it rolling, wanting to keep their leaders safe, 17, 20 roundabouts in the final 20 k's, very, very hectic, the bunch, where they're just going through Laval du Show, where they actually start tomorrow for the Havalambre stage. But yeah, they'd get organized, and then there'd be a roundabout, and then you have to come together, get organized again, hopefully avoid a crash in the roundabout itself. But coming up to the intermediate sprint point with about 11 k's to go, 10 k's to go, you see this narrowing here, really narrows because of that island. Yumbo Visma, I don't know if they were going to contest the intermediate sprint or not, but Quickstep and Remco are in much better position. UAE in good position on the right-hand side of the road too. It looks like they're going for it. I think it's Finfish the Black starts to launch it. And Novak behind him says, calm down, I think, or like slow down. But I thought Ayuso was going to go for these seconds because he's got a decent kick on him for a GC guy on the flat sprint and Yumbo weren't in good position to go for it themselves. And then Fisher Black does the lead out, but Novak didn't have it. So he flicks, I don't know if it's Almeida behind him, and they just lose the wheel of Fisher Black. So it turns into a bit of a mess for uh, UAE and maybe Ayuso who wanted to go for those seconds. But for Remco, he jumps out and takes the six seconds easily with Groves not wanting to fully extend. He basically pulls up stumps, you know, 20 meters from the line, and it's Casper Pedersen coming in third. No other GC guy took second. So Remco, one little sprint, six seconds, all in a hard day, or not a hard day's work. The opposite, in fact. That's a pretty good uh, risk-reward from him, and Quickstep kept him safe for the most part. They were front and center for this really technical K into the three-kilometer-to-go zone with Cataneo on the front, and there's just roundabouts everywhere, and there's another one with three 0.1 Ks to go just in front of safety or the illusion of safety and multiple crashes. Antomarche go down. We see UAE going down behind. Our last caught up or uh, impeded by it. Vingegaard avoids it. Remco's in the middle, but Milano and Menton, you can see the UAE guys going down are the two who the two sprinters who were taken out. And Cocard didn't start today because of his he fractured his scapula. And yeah, maybe they weren't going trying to go to the drive through just a little bit too quickly. And Julius Vandenberg's kind of found himself off the front with three Ks to go, puts the hammer down, and we see it's Menton indeed caught up with Crone. No GC guys apart from Bardet, I think, affected, thankfully, and Bardet it might have been a mechanical. And Alberson de Koenig yesterday was pretty good. They maybe got lucky a little bit with the crash of Vandenberg, but today they got it perfect. You can see Groves is in fifth position. He's got three teammates ahead of him. 
absolutely perfect with EF also doing a little bit of a lead out. There's also a big right hander at 700 meters and it's a downhill run here. So Groves in the perfect position, whereas Gano, he's suddenly free today. He wasn't having to do pull with 10 Ks to go. He's trying to move up with this big right hander at 700 meters to go. And it costs a lot of energy, but really impressive from him today, both his positioning for someone who's not frequently mixing it up with a bunch of sprinters, and Askey's also in good position near Edward Turnstreet's Van Gestel there. Drizzness is allowed to go for his own result because of the crash of Menton. And you see Ganna now, I think he picks up the back of Drizzness as Drizzness is trying to move up. You see also Robbie Hayes looking behind him. It's Plankart on the front for Alberson de Kernick. Groves in third position. And yeah, Alberson to kind of just nail this. They've got the quicker sprinter. They did the best lead out. They left him enough space. They didn't get overlapped. And it also helps that there's literally not another lead out here. Drizzners would normally be the lead out for Menton. So it helps that there was no lead out competing against them. And Gano launches early. He tries to get the jump on Groves. But Groves sees him coming, launches his sprint with about 100 meters to go. And you're not beating him from there unless he makes a serious mistake. And yeah, but it's still impressive from Ghana. When you look, he had a lot of wind in that last K. He had to move himself up. And he makes up three and a bit bike lengths on Groves, who had the perfect box seat for the last two Ks. I think Ghana could win one of these messy sprints, because this one wasn't that messy. The three Ks was not that technical. But here's a funny moment between Groves and Remco after the stage. Hey. The back to back wins 4 Caden Groves ahead of Gannon, Dries van Gestel third, Dainese came from bad position fourth, Aski turns, David Gonzalez, Soup Escara, Drizzness rounding out the top 10. Here's what Groves had to say after the stage. Again, it was another uh, hectic final today. Similar to yesterday with a lot of roundabouts, but uh, no, not many climbing, not much climbing at all, really. But the factor of wind as well, which made it uh, yeah, quite nervous. But uh, I mean, my team was fantastic again. Uh, we had a crash, we lost two guys actually in a roundabout. About two and a half to go, uh, but luckily my lead out man was still there, and I could uh, we could get organised uh, for the final. Intermediate sprint. Were you surprised to see uh, Remco passing you? <laughs> yeah, he uh, he wanted the time the time bonus, I think, and uh, I actually agreed with the team not to go for it. But in the end, I th thought I could get points without you know spending too much energy, so I I took second, which is also good for my uh, classification. No big changes to GC apart from Roman Bade losing over three minutes. So that's his GC pretty much over. Maybe he'll be allowed to go on the break tomorrow. Maybe Remco Rojo will be no more. They'll, I think Quickstep will try and give the jersey away tomorrow on the Havalambre. Steep finish. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you with a recap of that then. Ciao.